This is Mary Lynn in Taklaban, and we are at the church today. And Mary Lynn was telling me the story about her sister. Uh, did you say, Mary Lynn, that she ran out of the house with her baby uh, because the flooding waters were coming? Actually, they they didn't knew that there was water. Uh, when, when the wind was so strong, they decided to to get out of the house. Okay. But then when they opened the door, the, the water came rushing. Oh. So, and the water came rushing in the house? Yes. And then she was trying to swim with her little, her four-year-old yes. boy? And she was holding her, her baby and she tried to swim. Actually, she didn't know how to swim. Yes. So that, that's why she, 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 the, the, ba the baby let go of her. The baby let go. Yes. And she couldn't hold on to her yes. her four-year-old mm -hmm. son. Four-year-old son. Yes, and so he actually drowned yes. in the flooding then. Mm -hmm. And uh, also her husband. Her husband. What did he do with the the other boys? Uh, her husband took up uh, his eleven eleven-year-old daughter okay. and seven-year-old son yes. and what he did was because of the current that was so strong he tied them together and he tied him they he tied them uh, on the water containers uh, and then they tried to swim holding on to the water containers so he tied both of his children together yes and then tied them onto a floating container yes and you said it floated until they hit a pole somewhere? Yes. And okay. then when they hit the poles, they hold on to that, hold on to that until, until the water receded. Uh, until the water receded. So then the water receded and after that you were saying that your sister was, was the first one to find yes. her and baby? Actually, my, my sister, uh, the water drifted her about many many meters away from their house oh. and she banged to, to houses and she banged to poles in fact she has bruises until now she yeah. has wounds and then so when, it the water carried her hundreds of meters away from her house then. yes okay. and when the water receded she tried to look for her son yes and she found him on top of a galvanized iron. She found him just laying on a piece of iron then. Yes. Uh. Yes. And then she took her and she took him and took her to, to their neighbor, which, is, which has two, two floors, uh. two-story house. Yeah. So she took her baby that had drowned back to the house back then. to the house to their neighbor's to house to their neighbor's house yes and, and just held him for a while you told me yes and after hours they, they lived about one kilometer away from our house uh, so we didn't know what happened yes. until well the the storm the storm hit about eight o'clock in the morning and then at 11 in the morning her brother-in-law came telling us about about what happened to Guy Van, the name of the boy. Oh. And then, so we, we all cried. I personally cried because I, I give him that name. Oh. I named that boy. You named him. Yes, I named him. Oh. And we all love him because he's so talkative, he's so funny and so sweet. Oh. So sweet. And, mm -hmm. and then you told me you took him, his body, to a funeral home? Yes. The night, that night, Friday night, my brother, took him to the funeral parlor and then we, we thought that his, his body is okay there Yeah. and the following day which is Saturday we visited him I and my sister which is the mother of, of the boy and then we, we thought that he was inside the funeral house and then we, we told the, the, the employees there that were there to, to see and to, to find out uh, how's our house guy van and then he just told us, uh, okay, we're cleaning the funeral house, so just look for your relative. And we found him on the street. So street. you took the dead 
baby's body to the funeral home to be taken care of. And then when you went to actually see his body, they had taken his body and laid it out on the street with all the other bodies because they were cleaning the funeral parlor. Yes. And so they told you just to go out and find your baby on the street. Yes. And there were about, I think, more than 20 bodies on, on the street. Mm. And we, we could see his face because they, they just covered him with a see-through cloth. A clear cl cloth. cloth. Oh. And they're all bl bloated and uh, blood was coming out from his mouth. And we could still see his spit. It has wood. It was still bleeding. And it just broke our heart to see him lying on the ground because we really thought that he was inside the funeral parlor and he was on a coffin. But then there was no more available coffin. So that's why said you can you can take your your relative anytime you can take him and so you expected to see him in a coffin yes and they had put him out on the street yes. in a clear bag and you you saw him all bloated and yes. bleeding from the mouth and just in a very bad shape then yes and all, all the other dead people yes there. all the other dead bodies around yes. him most of them were kids most of them were kids. Yes. And he was next to an old man. And so that night, we went, we went home. Of course, my, my sister was crying so hard. Yes. And I was trying to comfort her. And while we were walking back to our house, I yes. was singing, It is well with my soul. Mm -hmm. <laughs> comfort her. And I told her, It's okay. It's just his body. And he's in heaven already. Yes. So you were singing it as well with my soul as your sister was crying going back to the house. Yes, and you're right, that was only his body. Yes. Yes. I told him we are still, God is still gracious because at least we found his body. Yes. Because there were many other people who were still looking for their dead relatives, they yes. couldn't find their body. Yes. And so, at home, we decided to just make a coffin uh, for his body. Yes. Since there was no more available coffin, so I think they were able to to get the body. Most 11 in the evening, uh, Saturday 11 in the evening, and it was so it was so hard to, to pass along the street because there were so many many garbage and many ruins. So it took him more than an hour to transport the body, just walking, wow. just walking, and, and... And you built, you actually built a coffin for his yes. little body? Yes. Yourself? You, we took plywoods from our house. Plywood from the house, from the house. to from, build it? Yes, from our ceiling. From your ceiling from in the house. Ceiling. And you built the coffin out of that plywood? Yes. And so I told my, I told the family to to just seal it, to just close the coffin. Yes. Because of course the, the blood will still come out, that's what they said in the parlor house, in the yeah. funeral house, yes. that uh, it's normal that the that the corpse will 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 bleed. Yes. And so it, it will smell, so we just seal seal the coffin with uh, adhesive tapes yes. like that and then the following day, again, we sealed it with plastic. Plastic, you put over the, the coffin. Mm -hmm. And it was raining almost every. It, it was raining almost every day, and my sister's house, where we put the dead body, the coffin was the the water was dripping. Oh. So we put the big umbrella over, so it, it will not. And have you done have you done anything with the coffin now? We we buried already. You David. buried it, okay. Yes. Actually, after on Sunday, after three days, we we're looking for a place where to bury him because yes. they they said that the body should be buried in seven days. Oh, so yeah. we looked for a place to bury him. We came, we went here to downtown on Sunday, last Sunday. To, to 
inquire from yeah. the funeral house across the church. Yeah. And they said we were never been close for more than since 1950s. We were never been close. This is the only time that we closed. Wow. So they could not offer any funeral service mm. like that. So for for a time we, we felt so hopeless and we felt so. You know, our heart was broken. We could not give him a decent funeral. You couldn't even give him a funeral. Yes. Yes. And so I told my my sister, we only have two choices. We can look for a dry place for to bury him, or just hand him over to the military for for mass grave. Yeah. Uh, but of course, if if we turn him over to the military for mass grave, we will, we will not know yes. where he would go. In so you, your options were to find some place to dig a hole, yes. or to give him to the military, and they would dig a very big hole and bury him with many other bodies. Then, okay. And we were we were kind of thinking of turning over him to the to the military. We thank the Lord for answering our prayer on that same day or because we thought everywhere in in Leyte was was flooded. Yeah. So we thought that we we could not bury him. But we thank the Lord on that same day our relatives from from other towns they came came over and they told us they they don't have flood there. Oh. So we decided that we will bring him there and, and bury him in that place. So you buried him a little ways off where there was no flooding then? Yes. Okay. Uh, we buried him last Wednesday. Last Wednesday. Well, Though it was so painful to lose him, yes. we thank the Lord again for that we found his body and we were able to bury him. Yes. So you're thankful to the Lord just that you were able to find his body and then bury him somewhere. Yes. Yes. Well, thank you. I'm, I'm so grateful that you can share this testimony and even still be grateful to the Lord, even in this tragedy. But, but one thing that, that, that really makes me sad about this day is after the flood, there's this rumors and commotions about NPAs, about bandits, about robbers. And Rebels and people causing problems. And for three yeah. nights, we are so tortured in the house. Uh -huh. Yesterday, we sent our kids to, to Cebu uh -huh. because I think on Friday, there was commotion, great commotion that everybody in our barangay was, was running and our neighbors came and telling us the news that there are rebels, the NPAs. So everybody was uh, running away from yes. something and told you that there were rebels yes. and criminals. And we all and we all climbed up to our ceiling. Uh, we all climbed up. There were more than ten of us. We yeah. all climbed up to the ceiling. We were all shaking in fear because uh, we, we heard this this news that when the, the rebels uh, they 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 come to, to kill. They come to kill people and get food and like that and, and steal and whatever steal. you have. Yes, and every one of us was there. My, my entire family. We have around nine kids. Wow. Yes, and we we're all shaking in fear. Every one of us, and then our the men in the house. They they took arms and they were guarding us, and, and because of fear, and then it the. It calmed down, calmed down, but then after many, after a few hours, another neighbor would come, get out, get out, let's let's run instead, let's run instead. And uh, then my, my sister, she, she couldn't, she doesn't want to leave the house yeah. because of fear, and uh, I I decided to, to be with them. So we stayed in the roof, the ceiling with my sister-in-law, who has a, a rheumatic heart. You stayed up in the ceiling in your house to get away from the rebels and the bandits? Yes, because okay. my, my sister-in-law has a, a rheumatic heart and my sister who has a one-year-old and a three-year-old, one-year-old boy and a three-year-old daughter, she said, we, we can run, we can run, it's still flooded in our house, yeah. it's still flooded, so, 
said, she said, oh, just stay here. So the whole night, we're shaking in fear and praying, and their baby was one year old, and my my other niece is three years old. We slept, we slept in the ceiling. And then the other members of the family went down, and they were running to and fro, whatever the, the men would tell them. All scared still. Yes, yes, I said, Lord, this is too much. Yes, yes. We, we thank you for allowing us to survive the storm, but then the, the trauma. But this is this is too this much. Is too much, Lord. Yes. We can't sleep until now. Yes. And now there's only four of us who is left in the house. Mm. We took our the kids outside the global. They're in Cebu. Others are in Davao. My sister who lost her son is in Davao now. Okay. There are only four of us, my yeah. mother who is a heart problem, my father who is half paralyzed. Yeah. She ha he had stroke due, due to hypertension, mm -hmm. myself, and then another cousin. In last night, my mo the middle of the night, my mother woke up because she thought there were rebels coming oh. in because we, we could hear noise, but actually it was just our roof, oh. uh, which was... Uh, that's making a noise because due to the damage of the storm and she woke up in the middle of the night waking my my brother is still there waking my brother rebels rebels so even and last night uh, last she night, thought rebels were coming to days. steal and to kill you it's been three days that we're living in in trauma yes and torture, and even, even if you're not afraid become afraid because everybody in the in the barangay on the street yeah. men are men are staying outside to guard they're making barricades of fire just to protect the, the barangay the people from from those one and and you are here in church with us today yes and Mary Lynn I just I just want to ask you after all of this hurt and trauma Do you still have your trust in God? I'm, I'm trying to be strong for my family. They yes. were, it was hard to see them leaving. Yes. We were separated from each other to protect the kids. Of course, they, all, they were all traumatized. It yes. was hard to see them leaving. Before they left for three nights, we were having family devotion. I oh. was leading the family devotion. You were leading family devotions. And yeah. I, I was trying to be brave for them. Yeah. But then I'm also shaking in fear. Yes. In fact, for three nights after Guy Van died, for three nights I couldn't sleep. Yeah. After seeing many dead people. Yeah. But then I said, Lord, I want to be brave for my family. I want to be strong, to model them the kind of faith that you want us to have. So I tried to lead the family devotion. So you were trying to be strong to show that, that God was giving you the faith to stand through it then. Then when my nephews and nieces left, they said, Auntie, you go with us because no one will lead the family devotion. Oh. I said, I have to stay because Nana doesn't want to leave. Oh. My mother doesn't want to leave. My father doesn't want to leave, so then, then I have to stay. So you're still, you're still trusting God? Yes, and it's my prayer that God will still use me. Before the storm happened, I, I attended a discipleship seminar and I was so excited uh -huh. to make plans for the campus ministry. And I said, Lord, it's so different now. Yes. And Every day I'm thinking, today is Friday, I am supposed to have a discipleship class. I miss my young people. Yes. I miss my But my God ministry. still has a plan for you through all of this. And it's my prayer, Lord, I, I have to do something. I, I should have a ministry. Yes. I should not be like other people, just every day thinking about what to eat. Yes. Uh, so occupied with so many things to do. I said, I want to have a ministry, and in fact, I, I really tried to come today because 
my mother doesn't want me to leave. She said there are so many clothes to wash. There is all in the mud. My 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 all my clothes are in the mud. And I said no, it's Sunday. I should be sad. Should get all of your clothes are all filled with mud. Yes. And she wanted you to stay home and wash. Yes. But you felt in your heart that you needed to come and worship today. Mm -hmm. And I said, I will come after, I will go home after lunch because after church I will visit my other church mates wow. and try to try to check how, how they are doing. Would you, do you have any favorite verse in the Bible that One you... One of the verses that I led, I, I shared in the family devotion was before I... I was asking myself, why is Psalm 27 one my favorite verse? It says, The Lord is my light and my salvation, of whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life, of whom shall I be afraid? Yeah. I said, why, why do I like this verse a lot when there's nothing to fear? Yes. <laughs> when I feel that I'm not, I'm not a fearful person, uh -huh. but then when, when this when times like this, yes. that's when I realized that I, I need this verse so much. That's why you needed that verse. That's why God had placed it in your heart so heavily. Well, thank you for sharing today. It's, it's so special to me to be able to hear your testimony of going through all of this and still wanting to serve God and love Him. So uh, we, we, our prayers will be with you, Mary Dan and with your sister who lost her little one and uh, may God use you all in a in a very special way now. Thank you, Pastor.